Well, let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And I'll read verse 11 and 12 and then verse 29. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, verse 12 and verse 29. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And come down to verse 29. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. And just one more scripture in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. <clears throat> While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. We are talking about a financial and material prosperity, a very important aspect for Christian living. And uh, in the first part of the series of teaching, I showed you that it is God's will that you prosper. More than anybody else, God desires that you prosper. It is God's will that you prosper in life. And this is the second part of uh, teaching in which I'm showing you how God prospers you. It's not enough to know that it is God's will for you to prosper. You need to know how God prospers you. You need to understand very clearly how God takes a person who lives in lack and want and how God takes a person who has nothing in life, living in poverty there, and how he blesses him and causes him to be prosperous in financial and material wealth. See, the problem with many Christian people is we don't understand how God does things. We live our life based on assumptions. We always assume that this is how God will do things. We assume how God will do things for us. And uh, many people, this is what they believe. They believe that somehow God will prosper them. You know, as a pastor, uh, I counsel many people and this is what they say. They say, somehow God will bless me, pastor. So when I ask them, what do you mean somehow? Eh, what do you mean by that word somehow? Are you trying to tell me that God will go rob the rich and give it to the poor? Are you telling me God is a modern day Robin Hood? What, what are you trying to say when you say somehow God will do? God never does things somehow. See, that is why the Bible is very important. If God does things somehow, if he works any way and every way, then we don't need the word. Let him somehow do things. Let him, you know, use whatever way he wants. See, this is where the Bible becomes very important because here in God's word, God reveals very clearly how he will prosper us. How he will take a person who lives in lack and want and poverty and how God will bless him financially. That is why the Bible is so important. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm showing you from God's word. There's several ways that God has ordained to prosper us financially and how he does it. How he causes us to prosper financially and materially. So first way we looked at in great detail is from Proverbs 10.22 where it says, the blessing of the Lord, it truly makes one rich. He adds no sorrow to it, and neither does toiling increase it. That was from the Amplified that I quoted there. And I showed you, it is the blessing of the Lord. That word blessing has several shades of meaning. It means a supernatural power. It means an anointing. It means favor. See, every child of God, every believer has within him a supernatural power. He has within him a supernatural anointing. The divine favor of blessing of God is upon him that will cause him to prosper in life. That is the first way that we looked at. Then the second way is God prospers you and me through the covenant. In the Bible, we read about the covenant of God. It talks about the covenant there. And in the covenant, there are many blessings. God promised many blessings there. And one of the blessings is financial and material wealth. We looked at Abraham and we looked at several other examples from the Old Testament there. So... I showed you how Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood to meet every need of mankind. That is including our financial and material needs. So we looked at all that. And thirdly, we are looking at the laws of prosperity, God's laws of prosperity. I showed you from these verses, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, 12 and 29. I began to show you how all laws, whether natural or spiritual, are established by God. And every law has been established to teach us something. Every law, 
I showed you the whole universe actually conveys something to us. I read to you from Psalm 19 verse 1 and 2 last week. I expounded a little bit of that. <laughs> eh? The heavens, the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, eh? the birds, the flowers, the fruits, everything, every single thing conveys, speaks to us. They tell us something. They teach us something. The entire universe that God created conveys something. It teaches you and me something there. So even the natural laws, whether they are natural or spiritual, all these laws are being established by God and they are being established to convey something, to teach us something. See, you need to understand that God will never do anything without a purpose. So for everything that he does, there is a purpose. So the laws, natural and spiritual, both are there for a purpose. They are there to teach us, to convey something to us. We looked at the law of gravity. We looked at the law of work as examples. Then secondly, we looked, uh, I gave you four statements that are mentioned there in these verses. First of all, I showed you, it says there that it is God who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Then uh, I showed you how it says there that every seed will produce after its own kind. Thirdly is every seed will not only produce after its own kind, but it has the power and the ability to multiply itself. And fourthly, God gives us different seeds for a different harvest. These are the four statements that we made. And then we began to look at how and what it means. It's because in, Paul says there in 2 Corinthians 9.10, he says there, the first part of the verse, he says, it is God who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So I began to show you why God gives seed to the sower. It's very clear there. He says that God, it is God who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So I showed you why God gives seed to the sower and I began to show you who is the sower. We looked at all those things there and we looked at several other truths concerning sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest time there. And then finally, from last week, we began to look at the second part of verse 10. So let's turn to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse ten. Now we are looking at the second part of verse ten. So it says there, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now I told you if you are reading the King James version that. Uh, word may is a very unfortunate translation. It says may he, that means may God give you. It's not a definite you know, phrase there. But the actual translation is it is God who gives you. God who gives you seed for sowing and bread for eating. So I began to show you that verse and how it talks about how God has planned wonderfully for your immediate needs and also for your future needs. See people basically don't understand the nature of God. They don't really understand what type of God we serve and worship. God is so wonderful that he has planned for both your needs, for your immediate needs and also for the future needs. In that one statement, you see it there. You may wonder where it is there. Well, it says there, it is God who gives you seed for sowing and bread for eating. So the immediate need is what? We need bread to eat. That's our immediate need there. And seed is for what? Seed is for your future needs there. So God has planned in such a way so that he will take care of your immediate needs, your present need, and also the needs of your future. So that is what we looked at uh, in detail for the past two weeks there. And then he says there, may he now supply and multiply the seed that you have sown. This is what we are looking at. See how good God is. <laughs> he gives you bread for eating. And then he gives you seed for sowing. Why? So that in the future you'll have a harvest, you'll have abundance, you'll not live in lack and want. So good God is. And beside all this, when you take that seed for sowing and you sow it in the ground, you know what the Bible says there? It says there, God supplies and multiplies the seed that you are sown. Now this is what we are talking about. We are talking about the principle of the seed that has been established way back in creation itself. In Genesis, this is the principle that God established. I'm showing you how every seed has a divine program. 
every single seed you when you take the seed and put it in your hand it may not look like anything to you you may not know the preciousness and the value of it you may not understand the power of it you may not understand the potential of a seed when you take it in your hand but if you go to the bible then you will understand the potential you will understand the ability you will understand the preciousness of every single seed and what it can do and how it can change and transform your life that is why the bible is so important and so fascinating to read and understand <laughs> so this is the principle that god established in the very beginning every seed is as a divine program with it and the thing that i'm showing you is that every seed as the ability to multiply by itself beyond our human recognition that is what i'm showing you can you imagine that <laughs> you cannot imagine it that's what the bible is talking about every single seed has the power to multiply beyond your human imagination that means beyond what you can imagine you cannot imagine how many times that seed can multiply and bring forth that is what god had put within every seed way back in genesis and the bible is very clear it says there as long as earth remains seed time and harvest time will remain sowing and reaping will remain so as long as earth remains this principle will work it will never fail my friend so last week i began to use the example of an acorn seed and i showed you through several pictures i showed you i just showed you one seed and i showed you the potential of that how it has the ability to actually replenish not only this whole universe but even other planets <laughs> even other planets a single seed it all starts with a single seed eh and that single seed has so much of potential and ability to replenish the whole earth with everything that you need there and also other planets there so we looked at that example and then i began to show you this is what we are talking about the infinite power that god has put within every seed beyond our human recognition so today i want to go further and explain that using another illustration there because people get stuck on uh, the hundredfold blessing <laughs> you know they go to the parable of the seed and the so the sower in mark chapter 4 you must be familiar with that where jesus tells a parable about a sower and how he goes and sows seed there and he says he takes seed and he sows it in the field there and he talks about how different seeds fall upon you know different soils there and then finally when you come down i think to verse 20 he talks about how good some seed fell upon good ground eh? this is what he's talking about in verse 20 some of the seed fell upon good ground and on the good ground it says there some brought forth 30 fold some brought forth 60 some brought 100 eh? so a lot of people are stuck only on the hundred fold ability or the power of the seed they say the maximum results that you can get from a seed is 100 fold based on that parable the parable of the sower because it talks about how the seed that was sown upon good ground fell upon good ground that brought forth 30 60 and 100 fold now when you go back to mark chapter 4 and you read that parable properly you will see that jesus never said that 100 fold is the maximum harvest that you can get from a seed he never said that is telling a parable and in that parable he wants to convey the idea what idea is conveying the idea of the infinite power of the seed that's what i believe <laughs> he's talking about the potential of the seed he's talking about how the seed has infinite power and ability and potential to multiply itself beyond your human imagination that's what jesus is talking about in that parable there <laughs> is not talking about how if you take seed and go sow it you will get 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold many preachers have preached that <laughs> yes according to your faith it will happen to you some people got 30 fold some get 60 some get 100 <laughs> but jesus is not putting any limitations and saying that the maximum harvest you can get is 100 fold no my friend you need to understand he used the figures of 30 60 and 100 just to convey a thought or an idea there never to put a limitation and say this is the ultimate this is the maximum of what you can get no i'll prove that by going to another scripture you know scripture always interpret scripture if you go to uh, matthew chapter 18 i'm just going to quote it you can go to the scripture and you can note it down 
eh, Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 and 22 there Jesus is talking about forgiveness and he tells Peter you need to forgive people when they hurt you and harm you and do wrong to you so Peter immediately says how many times I need to forgive people seven times <laughs> so if they wrong me and hurt me and harm me and do wrong and evil to me can I forgive them seven times and after seven times can I break the head this is what Peter is asking so Jesus said no no not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now this is the reply that Jesus gave to Peter. Not seven times, Peter. You forgive them 70 times seven. Now if you multiply 70 to seven, how many you get? How much you get? 490 times. Seven sevens are 49. So 490 times. Now I want to ask you a question. Was Jesus telling Peter, the maximum amount you can forgive a person is 490 times. And the moment he passes that or surpasses that even one time, let's say 491 times if he does harm to you or does evil to you, then you can break his head. Was Jesus telling that? No, my friend. See, he just used that in a symbolic way to convey the idea or the thought to Peter that no matter how many times a person does you wrong, no matter how many times he hurts you, you need to forgive. That's the idea there. So same way, when you come to the parable of the sower, Jesus used the 30-fold, 60 and 100. He was not saying that 100-fold is the maximum harvest that you can get. He was not saying that. He was saying, a sower went and he sowed seeds. Some fell on the stony ground, some fell on the thorny ground, you know, some fell on the rocky ground, some fell on good ground. And from that good ground, some got 30, some brought 60, some brought 100. This is what he's saying. He's not saying that the maximum limit is 100 fold. Sometimes even preachers get stuck on this. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here to show it to you and prove to you that God has never put any limitations upon the seed. I want to show you the infinite power of the seed. That a seed has the ability and power to multiply not just a hundredfold, my friend. More than that. More than what your human mind can imagine. That's what I'm here to show you. That's the principle that Jesus is teaching here. Both even in the parable of, of the sower and even here. This is how every seed has been programmed. Can you imagine that? You take an apple seed, it is so small. <laughs> a single seed, you put it on your hand. You don't know the value of it. You don't understand the preciousness of it. You don't understand the divine program that God had put within that seed. Eh? But every seed has the ability and the power to multiply beyond what your human mind can imagine or think of. Every seed is programmed like that. So that is why I tell people, don't just place limitations upon God by just misunderstanding other scriptures. For example, going to the you know, parable of the sower and thinking that hundredfold is the maximum that you can receive from God. I tell you, my friend, nowhere in the Bible, God places any limitations upon people. Nowhere. In teaching on the subject of faith, I taught you that. God never says, well, this is all you can achieve. You cannot achieve more than this. <laughs> No, he simply kept it open by saying, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. That means if you have faith to believe, no matter how much you can believe, I am ready to do for you. He left it open. He never places limitations upon people. In the same way, God never placed any limitation upon the seed. Some people think there are limitations. <laughs> but I tell you, my friend, God never put limitations upon the seed. No, God doesn't say, well, the maximum this seed can produce is a hundredfold. It cannot produce more than that. No, my friend, God didn't say that. God put unlimited power, unlimited potential within the seed. Power and potential beyond our human mind can imagine and even think of. And that is why if when you say or when you ask God, and just satisfied with a hundredfold. If you say, God, well, I'm satisfied. Oh, I'm happy with a hundredfold. You know what you're doing? You're actually putting limitations upon God. A lot of people put limitations upon God by saying, well, the maximum is a hundredfold. The moment you do that, you're just restricting God. You're placing tremendous 
limitations upon him you are saying this is all you can do you can't do more than that this is what a lot of people do yeah? they limit god to the hundredfold blessing but that is said don't limit god to a hundredfold blessing my friend yeah? god never said that this is the maximum of blessing He never said this is the maximum potential of the seed it can produce just hundredfold not more than that don't ever dream of more than that no god never put any limitations on that that is what i want to show you and i want to show you by using just another illustration today of the seed i want to use a illustration of uh, the corn if you take one single kernel of corn and if you sow it that corn will provide one stalk with two cobs or kernels of corn there and each year of corn will produce an average of 452 kernels of corn like i'll just repeat that you just take one corn kernel of corn and you sow it you get a stalk coming out and that stalk will produce two cobs of corn and each cob will produce 452 kernels of corn so if you calculate both you get 904 kernels of corn by just sowing one single kernel of corn now that itself tells you that is more than 100 fold isn't that you take one corn and you sow it you are getting 904 single kernels of corn that is more than 100 fold So why do you place limitations upon God and say this is all God can do this is the maximum that a seed can multiply and bring forth no my friend God never said that i think people have a problem with the hundredfold blessing and that is why i say this is the maximum <laughs> yeah. now i want to ask you a question let's say God comes to you and says well i want to bless you of 500 fold times you have any problem with that yes or no <laughs> let's say god comes to you and says well i want to bless you you have given something so i want to bless whatever you have given 500 fold 500 times i want to bless it and give it back to you will you say oh no god that's too much please don't do it i don't want it but some christian people are very good actors you have a lot of good actors and actresses in the christian church <laughs> they have a problem with receiving <laughs> the mind has been limited when it comes to its receiving they can only receive to a certain limit when it goes beyond the limit they are afraid oh this is too much i don't want this <laughs> i've seen many people like that <laughs> sometimes you take some money and you give it to people <laughs> You know what they say immediately this is their reaction they look at the amount it's not a big amount actually it's a small amount only but for them it's a big amount <laughs> yeah. they look at the amount and they say oh this is too much i don't want so much <laughs> see when you say that a hundred fold is too much i don't want so much you are just placing limitations upon god <laughs> So my question is what is your problem if God wants to bless you a 500 fold you have any problem with that well if you have some problem with that well bring back the 400 fold to me i will take it <laughs> you keep the 100 fold <laughs> i am ready for 500 fold i am ready for even 1000 fold <laughs> i have no problem in receiving i am open to god let him open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon me the bible says that i will have no room to contain it <laughs> See people have a problem in receiving from God. They limit God by you no know, by placing 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. They say maximum is 100 fold, but beyond that they cannot believe that God will bless them. And when you limit God, you are restricting God. You cannot receive. You will never receive. A lot of people have a problem in receiving. <laughs> Let's say God wants to bless you a thousand fold from what you have given. Will you say well I don't want it? Oh God that's too much. You have a problem with that? The thousand fold? <laughs> no my friend. 
So don't place limitations upon God. A lot of people, you know, they take this parable, they take some other scriptures and they say, well, the maximum that you can get is a hundredfold. This is what a seed can multiply and bring forth. But I want to show you, God never placed any limitations within the seed. He put infinite power and ability and potential in the seed to bring forth beyond what your human imagination can think. <laughs> a seed has the power not just to multiply a hundredfold, but even a thousandfold, and not only a thousandfold, even a ten thousandfold, if necessary, my friend. <laughs> That's the ability and potential that God put within the seed here. I'll show you from scripture. So you just take one kernel of corn and you sow it. You get 904 kernels of corn. That's more than 100%. <laughs> more than 100 fold there. Now you have an option here. You can take that corn. You can apply some salt in it. You can put some butter on it. And you can sever it and it will be very tasteful. <laughs> Surely it will be tasty and it will satisfy our hunger maybe for two, three hours or something. Or you can take that 904 kernels of corn. If you have the mind or the mentality of a sower, you can take that 904 kernels of corn and you can sow it back into the soil or into the ground there. And you know what the result will be is? You will get around 8,17,216 kernels. Can you imagine that? From just one single kernel of corn. It all starts with one single kernel there. You sow one, you get a stalk that produces two cobs there. Each cob has 452 kernels in it. So that is 904 there. So when you have just 904, you have an option to eat it and satisfy your hunger. Or you can take it and you can sow it. And when you sow it, this is the result that you'll get there. You'll get about 8,17,216 kernels of corn. What is this? This is the unlimited potential that God has placed within every seed. This is God's law, my friend. God has commanded every seed with an unlimited potential. That is why in the very beginning, God established this principle. Why? Why God established this principle? Why God put unlimited potential in the seed? Because... God also told human beings to fill the earth and multiply. <laughs> People talk about lack and want and shortage and all those things. I tell you, my friend, there's no lack and want and shortage on planet earth. Don't believe all those stories. There's enough for everyone. Even if there are billions and trillions and trillions of people on planet earth, there is enough for every one year because God knew all these things. He was the one who thought about all these things. He was the one who commanded man to fill and multiply and populate the earth. He is the one who said, multiply the earth, fill it. So God knew if mankind is going to fill the earth, then he needs to have food. And that is why you will see in Genesis, God put the seed within the fruit. Why? So you can eat the fruit and take the seed and sow it. So there will be enough for every single person on planet earth. <laughs> the very beginning, God established this principle. The principle of the seed. That is why as a believer, you should not live in ignorance. <laughs> should not live in ignorance. Lack of knowledge will affect you. You need a revelation about the principle of the seed. You need a vision. You need to have a vision about the immense possibility of the seed. Just imagine, every seed has this ability. Every seed has this potential. Every seed has a divine program. God has divine, divinely programmed it. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just give that seed an opportunity to fulfill. That's all you have to do. You don't have to program that seed to bring forth a hundredfold or a thousandfold. You don't have to do anything, my friend. God has already programmed everything and put it in that little seed there. You just have to do one thing. You have to let go of that seed into the soil. And I tell you, as long as you have it in your hand, it will not do anything. It will never multiply. But when you let go, then it multiplies beyond your human imagination. So God is the one who put the law of increase into effect. On this earth. That is why I read to you Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. And Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Now my question is this. 
do you think that he would make the law of the corn more effective than the seed planted in the kingdom of god i told you in the book of corinthians paul talks about when money becomes seed paul talks about it in chapter 8 and chapter 9 he's talking about money there he's talking about when money becomes seed money becomes seed when it is sown into the kingdom of god when it is sown for the work of god every time see the reason that i'm teaching you these things is you need to understand when you give sometimes there are people who give liberally they give so much but the thing is they don't understand when they give they don't know these things why they are giving for what they are giving they don't understand the principles of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping they don't know why god has ordered these things i know people simply give without expecting anything in return many people like that they are good people they give but no have no expectation that is why i am showing you all these things so that every time you give there will be an expectation in you you will expect an harvest you will have a vision every time you give there should be a vision about a harvest there unlimited potential that that seed will bring you so paul in second corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 is talking about money that he's talking about when money becomes seed money becomes seed when it is put into the kingdom of god when it is sown for god's word so this is the question here in the natural realm we see this principle working there's tremendous potential in the seed to multiply unlimited potential eh? which the human mind cannot imagine then how much more will your money multiply and come back to you when it is sown into the kingdom of god <laughs> if that principle the natural principle is so effective then how much more the spiritual law i'll tell you my friend the spiritual law is more effective and more real than the natural law <laughs> if in the natural it will work and i tell you it will work much more in the spiritual realm that's why you need to understand that in the natural when you sow seed it has the ability and the power to multiply and to come back to you with unlimited potential and i tell you much more it is in the spiritual realm see that this is a problem a problem is we don't understand we lack knowledge that's why i told you three words are very important for the christian life if you want to live in victory you want to live in success you want to live in prosperity you want to live in the abundance of god blessings then three words are very important one is knowledge <laughs> because the bible says for the lack of knowledge my people perish in every area of your life you lack knowledge of god's word in all those areas you're going to be affected another word is the word revelation when you don't have a revelation of god who he is is very basic nature of god when you don't know these things you're going to be restricted and affected in life and the third is vision you need to have a vision about god you need to understand who is he what type of god is he see people who are against the 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold and the 1000 fold blessing there people who are against prosperity they don't really understand the very basic nature of god basic nature of god they don't understand if you understand the very basic nature of god then you will understand that god never places any limitations upon you even when it comes to finances that is why it is important to understand the very basic nature of god and i always tell preachers they should have an overall view of the bible they should know the overall view of the bible from genesis to revelation because when you have an overall view of the bible when you understand the bible in in an overall way then you will not have any problem in interpreting individual portions of scripture but if you don't have an overall view then you'll be faulty in interpreting individual portions of scripture so that is why you need to have an overall view you need to understand god from genesis to revelation you need to have a general picture of the bible there and as you read from genesis to revelation you begin to understand the very basic nature of god from the first page to the last page of the bible you will see that god when he blesses people when he gives to people he always gives more than what they need you read anywhere in the bible he always gives you more than what you need that is why paul says god always does exceedingly abundantly more than what i ask or think or even imagine of <laughs> this is his nature you ask for something but god gives you more why because that's his nature he always 
not sometimes he always does exceedingly abundantly more than what you ask see that's his nature that is how he does things you take any portion of the scripture where god blesses people god never just blesses them with enough he always blesses them with more than enough abundance you take the first miracle where jesus turned water into wine now he could have just performed the miracle well there will be sufficient wine for everyone isn't it that would have been fine everyone would have been happy but you read there that there was abundance <laughs> more than what the people needed there again you take the five loaves and two fishes was there remaining after feeding 10 or 15000 people yes there was remaining why because that is his nature so that is why i say to you my friend don't put limitations upon god because when you put limitations upon god you don't understand the very nature of god the very nature of god is to always bless you with more than what you need think or even imagine that is god that is god my friend this is how he does things you may say well i need so much but because of his nature he gives you much more than that that's why i told you three words are very important <laughs> knowledge revelation you need to have a revelation of god who is he what type of person is he is he a good person bad person <laughs> is he a liberal person tight-handed person what type of person is he vision you need to have a vision in the law of the seed and harvest time is more real in the spiritual realm than the natural realm see god is the one who established seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping but the thing is the law of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping is more real in the spiritual realm than in the natural realm in the natural realm it may fail but in the spiritual realm it cannot fail we need to understand that my friend the problem is we are always governed by what we see in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 paul says there we walk by faith and not by sight see this is the problem of the christian person his problem is whatever he sees seems more real than what he does not see the seen realm for him seems more real than the unseen realm but the bible says the unseen realm is more real than the seen realm that's why he says as christians you don't live by what you see you don't let your life be governed by what you see or what you learn through your five senses no you don't let those things control you you live by faith faith in god's word don't live by what you see here and you know get all those things don't live like that you live by faith faith in god's word so that is why he says we walk by faith and not by sight that means we don't live our lives based upon the things that we see see this is the problem people always focus upon the seed rather than on the harvest because the harvest is something that is unseen the seed is something that you see so all their eyes is on the seed because they can see it the harvest they don't see they don't have a vision for a harvest and that's what limits them from receiving the fullness and the abundance of god's blessings But Paul says as believers we don't live our lives by what we see rather live by the unseen by what you don't see that means don't just look at the seed look beyond the seed look to the future where the harvest will come when you let go of the seed again in the same book in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 he says we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are unseen he says as believers we don't just look at the things which are seen but we look at the things that are unseen this is how we need to live our christian life my friend don't just keep living by what you see when you start living like that you begin to limit yourself have a vision about god have a revelation about god begin to set your eyes upon the unseen what is to come in the future that will change you that will make you live differently turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 1 I'll just read a scripture there Deuteronomy 
because i want to show you don't get stuck on the underfold because a lot of people are stuck with the underfold they say 30 60 100 fold is a maximum more than that don't dream of so don't get stuck on the underfold remember that god has put infinite possibilities within the seed every seed has the ability and power to multiply beyond your human imagine imagination not just even a hundred fold or a thousand fold much more than that Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11 May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you Now how many times is he talking about here a thousand times more he's saying may god bless you a thousand times more than what you are right now so what would you say if god comes to you says well i want to bless you a thousand times more than the situation and condition that you are right now will you say oh god that is too much <laughs> you have a problem with that my friend no if god wants you to wants to bless you a thousand fold be happy my friend rejoice <laughs> If God wants to bless you 10,000 times fold, well, be happy. Isn't it? Are you or not? Well, I'll be the happiest person if God comes to me and says, well, I want to bless you a thousand times more than what you have right now. I'll say, God, thank you. I'll shout and say, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have no problem with that. I am ready to receive the unlimited blessings of God. My heart and my mind is opened. I have decided to you know put down all barriers that will limit God from blessing me and prospering me in life. Don't limit God my friend. Don't bring God to your level. <laughs> I tell you God is on a different level my friend. Turn to Psalm 144. many people are against prosperity and i don't know if when they hear these messages what's going to happen to them they're going to get mad i think because they are against prosperity and now we are talking about the hundred fold and the thousand fold and 10000 times fold blessing it's going to upset a lot of people but it doesn't matter it's biblical you can't limit god Psalm 144 I'll read verse 12 and verse 13 That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth and that our daughters may be as pillars sculptured in the palace tile and that our barns may be full supplying all kinds of produce that our sheep may bring forth thousands and 10000s in our fields oh i like this <laughs> i love this Here is a person way back in the Old Testament but as a revelation about God. <laughs> Wonderful revelation about God. He never places any limitations upon God. <laughs> so wonderful. Just read that again and listen to it. Verse 13. That our barns may be full. He <laughs> says may it be full. supplying all kinds of produce and then he says that our sheep may bring forth thousands and then how much thousands and 10000 here is a man who has no problem no limitations he saying oh god may our sheep bring forth not just thousands 10000 how many people are ready for this today wonderful my friend this is how you need to be when it comes to god you need to be open eh? don't put limitations upon god don't restrict him eh? because god always wants to bless you with unlimited resources unlimited he always wants you to have more than enough more than enough the next verse it talks about in second corinthians chapter 9 you know after talking about 10 then he talks about the whole purpose of prosperity in 11 he says that you may be liberal <laughs> i like that verse eh? 
that you may be liberal in all things that means you don't have to look at how much you have and spend you know every time we have to live on a budget <laughs> sometimes even preachers talk about this they say well you know if you get a salary you just can't just spend everything that you have you have to put a budget every day provision list other needs you have to plan then only you know live within that amount budget living why because your finances is limited let's say you get 1 lakh rupees salary then put a budget and see that you live within that 1 lakh don't borrow <laughs> live within that so put a budget of how much you can spend and all those things there but you know what the bible teaches that god wants to bless you with more that means you can eat you can buy your clothes you you can eat the best food you can buy the best clothes you can put your children in the best school you can pay the highest fees you can buy the best car the best house you can have best of best of everything and still have more to give for the kingdom of god and the work of god which you prefer my friend you prefer budget living or you prefer this type of living i tell you i prefer this type of living <laughs> because budget living will always take you by surprise you will plan your budget for 1 lakh and sometimes you know not sometimes i say every time you get this unexpected expenditure coming up there and finished <laughs> you are taken by surprise you are planned for 1 lakh to live only on 1 lakh that's your budget but now your expense is coming 1 lakh 20000 or 1 lakh 25000 every month it takes you by surprise and finished <laughs> that is why i don't like budget living i prefer the abundant living god is so good he wants you to come to that level why so that you don't have to check how much you have and live within that no you can keep on buying and spending and giving and still as you give more and more comes in that is why it says there is he that scatter it and has more he increase it that's why seed time and harvest time that is why sowing and reaping <laughs> why so that you'll have unlimited you'll have more than enough that is what a harvest is about see when you sow you sow a little but when you reap you reap a harvest of whatever you sow what you sow is multiplied and given back to you you don't lose it you're not a loser you gain it comes back to you in abundance it comes back to you much more than what you have given some people are so spiritual they tell you well you know you only have to give but don't expect eh? don't listen to preachers who talk about sowing and expecting a harvest don't be deceived by all those teaching they'll say well i want to ask you if you are a farmer have you seen any farmer taking seed that is so precious and sowing in the far on the soil there or on the ground there and not expecting a harvest have you seen anyone like that no my friend if God had to say well you just take the seed and sow and don't expect a harvest not one person will sow there <laughs> every farmer when he takes the seed and goes sows it there he has a great expectation he looks forward to a harvest he knows that if he sows today 3 months later or 6 months later he'll get a harvest or whatever he sows and when the harvest comes all his problems are solved he'll have much more he'll have abundance there he knows it very well <laughs> that's the reason he is sowing but some are saying well so but don't expect <laughs> i think they are super spiritual the bible says expect my friend expect when you sow expect a harvest to come to you that is the reason god has established this principle seed time and harvest time that means there is a time when you sow and there is a time when you reap god is the one who established this principle there so don't limit god he says that our oxen may bring forth not just a thousand but bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields i like that may our sheep and our oxen bring forth thousands not even thousand he's not using singular thousand he's saying thousands and ten thousand times i wish christian people get a revelation of this and i wish they pray this prayer 
every time they sow into the kingdom of god may they pray and say oh god may you bless this seed and may you cause it to come back to me not thousands but even 10000 times more i tell you my friend if every christian people does this and praise this the lives will be changed and transformed we need to wake up my friend first kings chapter 17 the story is in verse 8 to 16 i'm not going to read uh, the verses in between you can go home and read it and note it down some of you may be familiar with the story it's a story about elijah the prophet and a widow who has a son and they have just a little flour and a little oil in a jar and they are going to make the last meal that's going to be the last meal she's going to you know cook the last meal and give it for her and the son they're going to eat it and die so this is what it's talking about there and if you look at uh, verse 9 or verse 8 and 9 then the then the word of the lord came to him saying arise and go to zarephath which belongs to sidon and dwell there see i have commanded a widow to provide for you So first thing i want you to notice here is that god already commanded this widow spoke to this widow that i am sending my prophet and you better take care of him <laughs> that is what it reveals here eh? so god before he could even send elijah to this place god spoke to the widow and told her my prophet is coming man of god is coming so you better take care of him you provide for him that is what we see there in that thing So Elijah comes there in verse 10. Says there, so he arose and went to Zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city indeed a widow was there gathering sticks and she and he called to her and said please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it he called to her and said please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So Elijah came exactly as God commanded him and he saw the widow he found the widow and then he says please give me a little water to drink and as she was going to get the water to drink he says please give me a little food to eat <laughs> now listen to what the widow replies so she said as the lord your god lives i do not have bread but only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar and see I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Now this is a terrible condition isn't it a very pitiable condition here. <laughs> this is the last meal severe drought famine no water no food everywhere. They don't have anything all they have is just a little flour a little oil. <laughs> Their lives are going to just last a few hours more that's all after that surely they are going to die. So she says all that i have is a little flour and a little oil and i am gathering a few sticks there and i am going to prepare a meal for me and my son and we are going to eat it that is going to be our last meal and we are going to die now this is the answer that she gives to the prophet now what god told her god said that i am sending my prophet and god commanded her to provide he says you provide for the prophet give him first but listen to what she is saying i have only little i think we should not be very harsh on her should not be very judgmental on her because we see our own picture in this story often times people are in the same condition and situation there see the thing is she just has a little flour and a little oil that's going to be a last meal for her and her son they're going to eat it and die there and that is why a whole life is filled with fear she is afraid to give even that little If I have this little and if I give it away then what will we do <laughs> This is what many people say well what I have is little the money that I have is little it's not enough to pay my bills not enough to meet my needs and you are telling to give into the kingdom of God give for the work of God if I give then what will happen how will I live <laughs> Just put yourself in the condition and plight of that poor widow I tell you we will all do the same thing we will all say the same thing all i have is little how can i give you we are going to make food and we are going to eat this is going to be our last meal and we are going to die this is what we will all say 
but listen to the next verse and elijah said to her do not fear he said to her do not fear fear is what actually robs us from the blessings of god fear prevents us from being what god wants us to become in life fear puts limitations upon god upon yourself and everything my friend fear is not from god it's from the enemy you know why because the enemy doesn't want you to prosper he doesn't want you to be blessed he doesn't want you to receive the abundant blessings from god and that is why he puts fear into you and that is why every time you decide to give even the little that you have you say well i'm going to take this little and i'm going to command because god has commanded his word i'm going to give it into the kingdom of god as seed i'm going to sow it so that i can get a harvest the moment you decide that you know what the enemy comes in and he puts fear and he says you fool if you have little and if you give that then you will not have anything you will go without anything he puts fear into you you will lose even what you have thank god the man of god identified the problem that the woman was going through he knew what she was going through and he says woman don't get afraid do not fear <laughs> he says as long as the lord god of israel lives there he says when you obey what i tell you when you go and make and give me first and then you make for your son and for yourself in need he says what will happen until the next harvest comes or until the next rain comes this flower will not run out or this oil that is in a jar will not get dry it will keep on replenishing this is what he said thank god the woman obeyed she had a choice should have eaten that little and both of them it would just satisfy their hunger for just maybe a few hours a maximum another day any of the next day they will die of starvation <laughs> but the thing is this see i'm trying to show you how god takes a person who lives in lack and want and poverty and how god prospers them some people think christianity is magic they think prayer is magic now i believe in prayer i believe god answers prayer i know i believe that when we pray god hears and answers i believe in all those things i believe in miracles i believe in the supernatural but the thing is there are certain things that people think that prayer is magic some people think that if i just take my hand and lay it upon their head they'll be prosperous <laughs> some people literally come and tell me that they say pastor please take your hand and put it on my head i ask them why so that i'll be prosperous bless me with prosperity now i wish i had that power i wish i had the media touch with me if i had it definitely i'll do it you don't have to come to my house i'll come to your house and i'll lay my hand upon your head <laughs> so that you can become pro prosperous <laughs> but it doesn't work that way my friend god doesn't prosper a person by coming there and simply blessing you and prospering you financially no i'm not against financial miracles we are talking about living in abundance of god when you have a need yes god blesses you he does a financial miracle for you that is different but i'm talking about having abundance having surplus having more than enough i'm talking about that living in the abundance in the fullness in the overflowing blessings of god that is what i'm talking about how does god prosper you and how does god bless you with much more than what you want while this is how he does it he didn't come to the lady and pray on her and say oh i'll bless you today with prosperity did he pray for her no he didn't pray for the widow the man of god didn't pray for the widow and for prosperity to come neither did god say well elijah go rob all the rich and give it to this poor widow did he say that no he didn't do that what did he say he commanded the widow now you think god didn't know that she had little flour and little oil <laughs> that they were going to have the last meal and die you think god didn't know that well he knew that but the thing is he wanted this woman to trust him this is how god prospers you my friend yeah? she had seed that seed was little so god was saying well you don't have to live in lack and poverty you don't have to live in starvation and die you want that little to become more how does it become more well take that little and give it to the man of god that is why god commanded her he said i'm sending my man of god and i know that you have little i know that's the last thing that you have 
but this is how i prosper people this is how i bless people take that little and give it to the work of god and then you will see god's abundance you will see how god will bless you see this is how god blesses us financially he doesn't drop suitcases of money from heaven i wish he does like that but the thing is he doesn't work like that that will be illegal so she took that little flower and little oil she obeyed the man of god and she made first and gave it to him and then you read the next verse and what it says it says there until the next rain that means until the next harvest the oil did not run dry now the flower did not run is that wonderful until the next harvest we are not talking about one day or two days my friend the next harvest minimum takes at least 6 months <laughs> So until the next harvest there was no lack no want every time they were taking flour it was replenished with more every time they were taking oil it replenished with more until the next harvest this is how god blesses and prospers people amen so don't fear about the little that you have when that little is placed into the hands of god i tell you god takes it he blesses it he multiplies it he gives it back to you god doesn't need your money my friend it's not that if you don't give him he'll starve <laughs> he'll have no food no my friend the whole purpose of why god ordained seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping is to show you to teach you and me how god prospers us financially and materially that is why paul says be not deceived god is not mocked whatever a man soweth he reapeth Whatever you sow you will reap you sow apple seeds you will reap apple you sow tomato seeds you will reap tomatoes i tell you you sow seeds of finance money you will reap it this law of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping is works more in the spiritual than in the natural my friend well i'll just stay with this next week we'll continue shall we all stand